Hi, Scott here from the Computational Modeling Systems team at the Centre of Excellence. Uh, today I'd like to go over a bit of an introduction to the using the NCI supercomputer, um, which we have access to as part of the Centre of Excellence, as well as the first couple commands you, you're probably going to want to run once you've got access to the supercomputer. Um, so the first thing you'll do once you start up is register for an account. Uh, if you've not already done this, you go to the NCI website at nf.nci.org.au, then accounts, and then all the way at the bottom, you'll need to first register as a new person, uh, fill in all of this information, say you do agree to the terms and conditions, and submit. That'll give you an ID number. Once you've got this ID number, go to connect to an existing project and enter your ID number there, as well as whatever project that your supervisor has decided you should be part of. Then leave these as they are, connect to existing system, role, as well as your surname that you entered in the last page, agree again, and submit. Um, after a day or so, NCI will send you your new username to use on the supercomputer as well as uh, SMSing you a password. Uh, to connect to the supercomputer, what you'll need to do is open up a terminal and go SSH your username, in my case I'm saw 562 at value.nci.org dot au and there we go um, I've set up something called SSH keys so I don't need to enter in my password every time and I'll probably explain a bit more about that at a later date so now we're in the supercomputer you can see we've got a message of the day so this will pop up any messages if the system is, has downtime um, if the queues aren't working or if hard drives aren't working. So the first thing to look at if you're having problems is to log out, log back in again and have a look through these messages to see if there's any useful information. Um, it also pops out what project you're being charged under. So projects are basically the accounting system at NCI. Um, so they man manage how much disk storage you have as well as how much compute time you have available. So let's clear the screen. And the first thing we're going to look at is how much compute time you have available. So this isn't infinite, though it is pretty large. So if I run quota su and hit enter, I have the usage report for my current project. So this says in the this quarter, so quarter two of 2013, we have about 80,000 uh, hours of computer time and people in my project have used about 40,000 already or there's about 40,000 left rather so we've used about 30,000 um, there are lots of different queues here copy queue, normal and express both on VAYU, the supercomputer and DC which is the data analysis cluster um, yeah, so you can also, if you think someone's over overusing their quota, you can go dash V under quota SU. We'll show you how much individual users are using. Um, by the way, the number at the end sort of relates to the institution you were at when you first registered your account. 561 here is the University of New South Wales. 562 is University of Sydney. UTAS and then various other things. Okay, so that's computer time. To see how much storage space you have available, um, quota without the SU. So you hit enter and I'm on a lot of projects so I have a lot of things. Let's just narrow it down with a dash P W35. So this says only show the W35 project. Um, we 
have to add dash v. If you're not over your quota, it won't show you anything unless you add in dash v. So here we have on the machine value in my home directory, I'm using uh, 1.2 gigabytes out of 1.8 megabytes. And in the short file system, I'm using 2.3 out of 5.6 terabytes. Oh. When I say I, I mean everyone in the W35 project. So the quotas in the short directory are shared amongst everyone. So you can see that short has a very small amount of disk space that you can use, whereas so the home has a very small amount of disk space. Short has a very large amount of disk space. So what this means is generally you'll want to be only having your configuration settings and scripts and stuff in your home directory, but any data that you have from your models will be in the short file system. I'll just show you where that is. So that's under slash short, then your project name, so W35, then your username, so in my case, sort 562. So these are all my model outputs. Whereas here, I've just got scripts, configuration files, that sort of deal. Um, another thing is the, short, the home file system has backups. So if something happens to the file system, then it can be recovered. The short system doesn't have backups. Just because it's such a large file system, it's only meant for temporary storage. So if something goes kaput on the file system, which it has been known to do, it has happened has almost happened in the past, you will lose everything. So backups are on you to do. Um, there is also, if we go back to here, something called MDSS. This is archival storage. So this is for um, outputs once your simulation is done. It can be put onto MDSS. MDSS is a large file system, it's a tape robot that you can request and um, it is stored at redundant locations. So if something happens to the file system, then, it can, then your data can be recovered. However, if you do something like remove the file, um, there, are, there aren't like time backups, so you can't go back in the past and recover it. Um, so you do have to be careful there. MDSS is another subject that we can probably look at in a later video. Um, now the last thing is is runs that you're going to put on the queue. Um, so if we go in it, uh, do, 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 in start. NQSTAT shows you things that are currently running on the supercomputer. So this is under just your own project. Uh, QSTAT on its own, without the N, will show you everything that's running on the project. So this has a job identification number, a job name, a user who's running the job, as well as the resources it's currently consuming, the status of the job. So this job is on hold so it's not consuming any resources. If we go up to the top you can see that some are running and have been running for 15 minutes or 5 minutes as well as the queue they're in. Uh, normal is the queue you're most likely wanting to use. It's sort of the bog standard queue. There's also Express. Express is for small jobs so if you're doing debugging or if you're doing a compilation you can use Express. Um, there's smaller limits, it costs more, but it's generally quicker to get running. Uh, to submit a job, if you just got, say, foo.shell, let's make a quick file, echo hello. You run qsub for qsubmit and then the name of your file. So now there's a job running, which we can see here. My job is queued, it's the script foo.shell, and it's got the default runtime, 
which is an awful long time, and the default memory usage and number of CPUs. Um, one thing you can do is add in flags here. So if I add hash PBS L, this will change the resources. I want to change the wall time to two minutes. Now I can delete the previous job with QDEL for Q delete and then put in that number and I'll stop that from the queue. So now if we go to NQ stat it won't be there. Q sub foo.sh again NQ stat. Now we can see that the time is rather than the default of 47 hours, it's going to run for just for two minutes. Uh, the less resources you're asking for, the more likely that the queue system is going to put you at the head of the queue instead of having to wait until everything before you is done. So it tries to just fill in any gaps where it can. Lastly, there's a few other things you can add here. So you can add vmem is the amount of memory you have available for your job. So say one gigabyte. And if you've got a parallel job, you can add n CPUs, the number of CPUs. Um, say I wanted four CPUs to run my to run my command. And there we have it. So that will request four CPUs, one gigabyte of memory for the whole thing. So each CPU would have about 250 megabytes and a wall time of two minutes. So that's been a basic introduction to using NCI. You can see my run's finished there in QStat. So it's no longer there. And we can look at its output, which will be the job name plus a dot o and the job number and there we have it we said hello our resources used was not terribly much just to say hello okay thanks for watching and i'll see you next time